Hi, my name is Jane Wyrick, and today I'll be talking about the influential study, The Split Brain in Man. This study was conducted by Michael Gazaniga and his colleague, Roger Walcott Sperry, who was the first to study split brain patients. They were interested in the effects after the procedure on higher level functioning and brain connectivity. This study included a brief overview of five decades of multiple studies conducted by Gazaniga and Sperry, but they went more into detail about two specific tests. So before I talk about these methods, it's important to note that for a visual stimulus, the right visual field goes to the left hemisphere, while the left visual field goes to the right hemisphere, as shown in the picture on the slide. And for a tactile stimulus, the stimuli in the right hand is perceived by the left hemisphere, and the stimuli in the left hand is perceived by the right hemisphere. For their visual method, they used a visual stimulus, such as a picture or message, shown to one visual field for a tenth of a second. And for their tactile method, they placed a tactile stimulus in the patient's right or left hand out of their view. So they found that information presented to the left hemisphere was easily described in speech or writing, but information presented to the right hemisphere relied on verbal guesses from the left hemisphere. So they conducted this study again, and instead they asked the patients for nonverbal answers and they recognized that the patients could process the information in the right hemisphere and locate it out of sight in their left hand, but they couldn't name the object in their left hand because that tactile information was going to the right hemisphere while the language abilities are in your left hemisphere. So why was this important? These results determined that certain functions are confined to the right or left hemisphere. More specifically, Gazaniga and Sperry recognized that tactile information goes to the right hemisphere while the left hemisphere is superior in all things language. But they also recognize that each hemisphere is its own separate realm of knowledge and consciousness capable of its own independent emotional response. So why does this matter? It was the first time anyone localized a function of the brain to a specific hemisphere. So all psychologists after them wanted to know what hemisphere does what function. A group of psychologists was interested in finding out what hemisphere was important for spatial awareness, so they conducted a line bisection test and found out that spatial awareness is dominated by your right hemisphere. Another group of researchers was interested in what hemisphere is responsible for visuomotor controlled grasping, regardless if you're right or left handed. And they found out that visuomotor controlled grasping is in the left hemisphere, regardless of dominant handedness. This main study is important because it allowed other researchers to know that we could localize a function of a brain to a specific hemisphere, and then they went and they localized functions not covered by Gazaniga and Sperry to specific hemispheres, such as spatial awareness and visuomotor control.